everyone, Missy here from MD Glass Creations and I am here to show you how to use the jewelry making kit that you would have purchased from our website at www.mdglasscreations.com. In that kit there should have been a pair of nippers, of course brand new. There should be a roll or a bit of lead free solder. There will have been a couple pieces of pottery, larger size pieces of pottery, some sea glass, and I don't have a sample of that here, but there will have been some tumbled, sea, tumbled glass in there of various colors, as well as some smaller pieces of pottery. So let's talk about using the nippers first with the pottery pieces that you have received. The nippers are wheeled and they're used to cut tile or glass tile and you are going to put those on your piece of glass. The wheels need to face the direction in which you want to cut. So let's say I want this piece right here to be my pottery or my necklace piece. So I'm going to put these just a little ways up here and I'm going to put them in a direction slanted away from this particular piece that I want and I'm going to squeeze. So now what I have is a larger piece that I have to clean up just a little bit. So I'm going to go at the bottom right here and squeeze and I'm going to remove this piece and put it to the side. And then I'm also going to go right here and squeeze just a bit and get that off. And then I'm going to take this off, leaving me with kind of a elongated piece of pottery with just this very pretty pattern here. I'm going to clean this up and move this out of the way. So that is how to use your nippers. And I'll show you that one more time. I'm going to try to get this very pretty flower out of here. And so I'm going to put them facing in this direction and not going through the flower and squeeze. Moving this out of the way. Um, this may be a little difficult because this is here. So there's no promise that I'm going to get this entire flower because I'm going to have to go right before that and try to get this apart. There we go. And so now I have this triangular odd piece of pottery, but I have this pretty flower here that I want it to keep. There is a separate video on how to foil, and we are going to foil these pieces the same exact way that we foil a stained glass project. You have some copper foil. You're going to take it. You're going to take your piece of pottery you're going to get it as close to the center as you can and you're going to fold up and you're going to keep doing that around the entire piece of pottery and then wiggle and tear of course using your fingers to push it up of course this is a thick piece of pottery so we're only going to see a tiny little bit of foil on each side if for some reason, like in this situation, there's not enough foil because it's so thick and the piece of foil would not go all the way around it, you can take the foil again. Don't put it in the center this time, but get it closer to the edge, leaving the amount that you want to show on the piece and then fold up and see how I got just a little bit more on the back side of this piece of pottery. So I'm gonna keep doing that, being sure to try to keep it as even as possible going all the way around. And then I'm going to hold and tear. Now you're going to take your dowel. Yours of course is a wooden dowel, a stick and you're going to go around the outside edges of your piece of pottery or piece of tumbled glass and then smooth out all of the ends. Now, if you are watching this video and you have not purchased a kit from us, you want to be sure that you use lead-free solder on jewelry. And as you can see, this says that this is lead-free solder. I have a smaller piece right here. 
You are also going to want to use a separate soldering iron if you are a stained glass artist from the soldering iron you use for stained glass. And the reason being is on the edge of that solder soldering iron or on the tip of that soldering iron, you already have tin lead or, you know, whether it's 50-50 or 60-40. So you want to be sure that you use a separate new soldering iron for this. After I have foiled my pieces, and I have a couple, few, a few pieces here that are already foiled, I am once again going to take my flux, making sure that it is lead-free flux also. If I have sent you a kit, the flux that's in your kit, whether it's for stained glass or pottery, is lead-free. And I am going to flux the pieces of pottery. I am then going to take my soldering iron, get just a little bit of solder. You do not need a lot of solder to complete these projects. And I am going to tin the same way that I do for my stained glass project. So I'm just going to tin the outside edges of this piece of pottery. And I'm going to go ahead and work on this other one also just to give you a second angle and viewpoint. And as you can see, I double wrapped this piece because it was so thick. And so there's just a little bit more to solder. When it has cooled off enough, of course, you can flip it over. You want to make sure that you flux it again. And then go ahead and tin the other side. Once again, when you're making jewelry, whether it's earrings, necklaces, bracelets, whatever it is, you want to be sure that you are using lead-free solder. I am soldering on a piece of cardboard, so what you need to do at home is just grab a piece of cardboard, and you can use a piece of cardboard. It's the perfect thing to use because when you're done with it, you can throw it away, and you throw away the mess that goes with it. I'm just going to continue to go all the way around that. And then once again, another method is you can pick this up. You want to be sure if you're going to pick it up that you are soldering away from yourself and you are not soldering towards your hand just in case the solder pulls a little bit and blows down, it doesn't burn you. So I'm going to continue with soldering this one and finish it up ahead and solder the back of it. Sometimes I will use the back of a stick or the back of the dowel rod to kind of hold it also so that I can solder. Okay, so what we have now are a few completed pieces of pottery that we're going to make into a necklace. And like I said, I have a couple completed pieces here that don't have any thing on them at this point and I'm just going to move these to the side. Also contained in your kit, you are going to have some jump rings. These are jump rings that are specifically tinned so that they were solder. I like to grab a piece and a pair of needle nose pliers. You can get some needle nose pliers from the dollar store um, to attach your jump ring to your piece of jewelry. The next thing you want to do is decide how you want your piece of jewelry to hang because it can hang various ways as for instance this one's hanging long um, this one's hanging kind of long to kind of get the picture of the two houses here and then this one we have the swirl going on so for this particular piece I'm going to leave it like this I'm going to put just a little bit of flux on my jump ring a little bit more flux here on the edge and I am going to hold my jump ring right at the edge of the piece of pottery get a little pool of solder on the edge of my soldering iron and I'm going to solder that jump ring onto the piece of pottery. You want to be sure to hold that there for just a couple minutes while the solder cools. That way it does not pull away from your piece of pottery. Once you're at this point, that jump ring is on there. You can then throw this into a container of Dawn dish soap or other some other kind of dish soap and clean it off and then take a paper towel and dry it off. This is going to be the same situation or you're going to use this same practice over and over and over again to make 
up to 20 pieces of jewelry. We have included 20 jump rings in your order as well as several pieces of tumbled stained glass which is our sea glass and then like I said a couple big pieces of pottery as well as some smaller pieces of pottery. If you have any questions after you have viewed this video and you still need some assistance you can give us a call at 443-610-9130 or on my cell at 410-353-8023. You can also contact us via email at info.mdglasscreations.com at gmail.com or you can visit us and email us through our website at www.mdglasscreations.com.